Uh, welcome back to Hoops HD, everybody. Ooh. This is the season premiere of Under the Radar, if I'm correct. It is. It's our first Under the Radar since pre-COVID. Like the last time we did one of these, none of us knew what the coronavirus was. I think it was towards the end of the season, so we kind of knew a little bit, but yeah. uh, it wasn't. We didn't think it was as real as it turned out to be. I'll put it that way. Right. But I'm your host, Chad Sure, We're joined by David Griggs. And joining us from Bracketeer.org, we have Rocco Miller as well. Uh, we've got a lot to get to here. But I guess, first of all, David, for those that are new to the show, what does it mean to be under the radar? Well, okay. Well, y you know, tonight was a busy night. Two really big games between West Virginia and Gonzaga. That one's over. We got two other top five teams coming up between Illinois and Baylor. Lots going on in major college basketball tonight. We're not talking about any of that. Uh, what under the radar is, is essentially the 22 or I guess 21 this year, regular single bid leagues. Now, let me say that the single bid is not an automatic thing. Like these teams could, in the or these conferences could, in theory, send two or three or 10 if they really blew it up, teams to the NCAA tournament. But way more often than not, these teams are only getting one in. So that's uh, everybody except the Power Five, which is the Big Ten, Big 12, Pac-12, SEC, and ACC, and the five other regular multi-bid leagues, which is the Big East, Mountain West, uh, West Coast, American, and God, I always forget. Atlantic 10. Atlantic 10, yeah. yeah. Uh, the other disqualifiers is, is any team that is ranked in the top 25 other two major polls we don't consider to be under the radar. Uh, did not happen at all last year. Yeah. And uh, there was only one team, I believe Loyola Chicago, received one vote in the AP poll this year, uh, this, this week. Uh, not a, no other team for any of these leagues that we're going to be discussing even got a single vote in the AP poll this week. So uh, We'll get to that here a little bit. There's a couple teams, and one in particular, I'm shocked they didn't get any love, but we'll get to that here. We'll soon. see what happens next week when we get a little more, yeah. more games into our belts, too. But um, we like to start with a feature conference, and I like to surprise you guys with it because yeah, we, uh, we never know what it is. I, I never know. You know. Sometimes I let you know in advance. Sometimes I don't. Uh, sometimes I have no idea what I'm doing. But uh, actually, before we get to our feature conference, I want to bring back one of our favorite features here on our shows in both the uh, Under the Radar and in our regular Hoops HD report as well. Uh, David, I know this is one of your favorites. Oh, uh, it geez. is the world famous blind resume. Oh, yes, the blind resumes. Yes. Uh, and there you see on the screen blind resumes. And I want you guys to compare these two resumes. On the left there, you have a team with uh, four wins already, three of them neutral court wins over top 200 or close to top 200 Ken Palm rated teams. Yes. On the right, one, the team on the right, has done nothing. They beat a 326 team at home and lost the game. I actually know who the one on the right is. The one on the <laughs> yes. left, I have no idea. But but would you guys agree with me that the team on the left has a way better resume right now than the team on the right? I guarantee you I that I guarantee I think, you that in my latest bracket, the team on the left is higher than the team on the right. <laughs> Rocco? <laughs> I think we have a team from Abilene, Texas, and a team from Durham, North Carolina. I think you are dead right. Pretty impressive that you <laughs> nailed, nailed it. My God, Rocco, blind getting, resumes. getting Abilene Christian. I knew it was Duke. There we are. Abilene wow. Christian, way better resume than Duke right now. That's all I got to say. Um, <laughs> I'm impressed, Rocco. Wow. Thank you. Wow. And, and the Howard, it was the Howard Payne game that gave it away. The Howard <laughs> Payne game absolutely gave that, gave that away. Um, I want to actually do, do that to go right into our feature conference, a conference that we normally don't feature this early in the season. But with that start by Abilene Christian, let's take a little look at the Southland Conference. That um, Here's the standings in the Southland so far. You can see, other than one win by Stephen F. Austin, <laughs> all the thing that happened was Abilene Christian winning a bunch of games. But, but yeah. Rocco, Abilene Christian went down to this event that was supposed to be a bracketed event down in, yeah. down in Florida, ended up being a round robin event. Went three and zero with with some fairly nice wins over Austin P and uh, and what did they beat? Uh, Omaha. I think they beat East Tennessee State in there. It's not even showing up on the screen. I think that was Wednesday. Yeah, that was yeah. The, that was the game that tipped the season. Yeah, that was the very first game of the season. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah, so I th I think Abilene Christian. You know, for for those of us who watch under the radar, grabbed our attention right off the bat. There was. Uh, nothing else to watch when that game tipped off, at least. And <laughs> yeah. and the way that, the, you know, ETSU was one of the great stories of last year. Uh, of course, Coach Forbes went to Wake, and uh, now they have Jason Shea, but it's still, you know, they, they brought in some big transfers. I know Brewer came over from Tennessee. 
And so I expected ETSU to either be, be in a close game there or, or win it. And so the way Abilene not only came out and won, but they dominated the game and then followed it up with a game against a, another really hyped team, Austin P for under the radar, um, with, you know, Taylor back and all the uh, preseason love they got. They went and went toe-to-toe with them and pulled it out at the end and then finished it off with another double-digit win over Omaha. Really impressive. You know, Abilene Christian's only been D1 for six years. They broke through uh, and got the NCAA auto bid a couple years ago. They're very well-funded. They were a D2 powerhouse uh, when they were in D2. And uh, it's a legit threat now to Stephen F. Austin, I think. Uh, I think it is. I mean, CF Austin didn't even play a D1 game yet. They, 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 their win was against Lit Torno. That's, I guess that's French for the Torno, right? Right. And, and unfortunately, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And unfortunately for the Jacks, they, they actually were scheduled to be in Bubbleville. They landed, had a couple positive tests and went right back on the airplane home. So they missed out on three or four games there. Yeah. And, and, and as you can see here, they, we've got here the, the red games in red on, on the week's results are games that were lost by this conference, non-conference games that were lost games in blew our wins. So you can see there was only, I guess, Nichols State picked up a win over Idaho State as well. That was the only other D1 win. Um, I think Nichols State won two games, actually. But David, go ahead. Yeah, well, Idaho State only sort of D1. Okay. Um, (laughs) But yeah, Abilene Christian, a really good story. A recent transitional team. I didn't realize it had been six years. It's it's kind of crazy. The more time goes by, the faster it goes. But uh, Mm -hmm. You, you, you know, in the year they made the NCAA tournament, you might remember this, Rocco, they lost a lot of key players in February. It was really late in the yeah. year and still managed to finish strong and get the auto bid. So kind of a a fun story going on in Abilene Christian. They, you know, we certainly enjoyed following them in the last few years. And, and uh, I just switched over. We see the upcoming games. First of all, as we've noted on the Hoops HD report the other night, any game you see there in the upcoming game list, take with a little grain of salt. We know how the season's going. We know games are getting canceled. We're getting about 80% of the games in, which means that 20% of the games you even see there in this conference coming up this week uh, probably are not going to happen. Uh, But talk about Abilene Christian. Their next game is coming up on Saturday, actually hosting Tarleton State, who gave uh, Texas uh, A&M a battle tonight on the road. So did lose that game. But uh, Abilene gets Billy Gillespie. And then then a road trip next week to Texas Tech for Abilene as well. So a couple games to – We'll, the, the we'll really find out about them. I don't think they have a little yeah. problem next Wednesday, though, if they play that game. Yeah, they're, they're, they're swinging way over <laughs> their heads in that one. But it's still kind of – I mean, it's still a good game for them to play. Let's jump through. We're going to run through all the rest of the conferences now in alphabetical order. We're going to start off in the America East. Uh, where Rocco, I don't think we've seen much action at all yet. Uh, right. uh, we have, what, about five or six games that have been played, I think, total. <laughs> yeah, I think, the, I think the shout-out out of the games we've seen goes to UMass Lowell, who – were able to get into Bubbleville for a quick game with San Francisco and stunningly beat the Dons. Um, you know, that was before the Dons beat Virginia. So uh, for a couple of days there, it looked like UMass Lowell was going to have one of the best resumes. Um, I think I even sent them a tweet saying, are you guys aware that you're in the running for a number one seed? In the <laughs> <Yeah>. tournament?" <laughs> uh, but the Riverhawks came back to reality. They, they fought uh, Illinois State, but lost, I believe. And then the Ohio yeah. State game, they were in it the whole way and then lost by 10. Um, so I think the Riverhawks are improved. That's a, that could be a fun story this year. I also was impressed that UMBC held their own with Georgetown, ultimately fell, but they did beat a St. Francis team pretty handily on the road that had just beat Pitt. So um, looks like Ryan Odom's going to have another fun year in at uh, UMBC. It's just a quick note on these results. The way we have set up, we only get a week's worth of results. We are technically on the eighth day of the season. That's why we're missing those Wednesday results for the screen. Uh, but yeah. thanks thanks for filling on some of those games that are not just showing there. As we go through the rest of the season, we'll be doing this every week, and we shouldn't be missing any games. Uh, David, in terms of an upcoming schedule for the American East, uh, said there are games that are going to be played. Uh, there they are. If we want to talk about Lowell, they'll be hosting Sacred Heart this on Friday, and they'll be playing NC State actually on Thursday. Yeah, I believe that's, that might be back in Bubbleville again. Uh, yeah, kind of the times we live in. Uh, a lot. I think the team that we all really like out of this conference is Vermont. Uh, still no yeah. games coming up. They're still locked down. So you, you know, it's kind of hard to look at anything mm-hmm. with a whole lot of 
uh, emphasis at the moment. Uh, UMass Lowell, a good story. New Hampshire, are we going to see them this week? I, I'm not. Yeah, there they are. Quinnipiac. Uh, they're kind of a fun story just because they, they were picked to finish third. This is a team that traditionally uh, is picked to finish and actually ends up finishing in the bottom half of the conference. So they've kind of been on the upswing in the last couple of years. It'll be kind of interesting to see what they can do on the road. But um, Oops, I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to switch this conference, but go ahead, David. Yeah. But again, like I, I think the team that we're all waiting to see just isn't going to get out onto the court for at least another week. Uh, let's uh, jump right on over here, though, then to the next conference. That is the Atlantic Sun. Uh, Jacksonville left a 3-0 start after a win against Presbyterian tonight. Uh, Bellarmine still hasn't started their season yet. Uh, still has not started their division one yet. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, Rocco, is there anything we've really seen out of this conference? I, I guess we got to talk about Liberty and what, the, what they did with their wins over Mississippi yeah. State and South Carolina. Yeah. Liberty took it to angry Frank and Mississippi state. You know, that was, um, impressive for Liberty standards. Their two losses are against big power five programs as well. I think they lost to Purdue and, and TCU of, and TCU. Yeah. And that so, TCU game was close. I mean, they were right in there. Yeah. I was, I was pretty um, surprised by that. I thought the flames were going to take a real step back this year from everything they lost last year. Uh, but I did get a chance to see some of the space coast classic. And they, I mean, they definitely held their own uh, not only in the Purdue game, but beating Mississippi state there. So I was impressed with that. And I also think, um, I got to watch the game tonight between Lipscomb and Cincy, and that was really tight most of the way. Cincy just pulled away in the last couple minutes, but I think it was tied with uh, under 10 minutes left. So uh, Lipscomb was, our, I think, most of our pick going into the year. Uh, looks like we have another Lipscomb-Liberty uh, battle all year, perhaps. I, I think you're right. Uh, did, David, do we, do we want to comment about the team that I picked as – my preseason spoiler who had a bit of a stumble Monday night. Well, they lost to Emmanuel. Well, we all knew you were crazy. Man, that pick. So, um, wow. Losing to Emmanuel Webster. Yeah. Uh, Emmanuel Lewis. Hey, does, uh, not count, does not count against their net. They'll be okay. Uh, well, not. We don't have any nets yet. You can see all the various ratings are up there on the screen uh, and the keys yeah. to what they are are on the bottom. Um, but – uh, upcoming games here. If we want to talk about Liberty, they're playing SFPA here. Um, Lipscomb's got a game in Arkansas on Saturday. Uh, might be shooting over their heads there. SEMO yeah. coming up Monday. Uh, actually, they're playing SEMO Choice next week, it looks like. There's a, we're going to see a lot of that in, even in these non-conference games this year. Right. Yeah, good to see Stetson and Miami get that game made up. They were supposed to play on opening night and uh, COVID shut down Stetson for a week, so... Well, and they can, they remain to shut down for their game against Emmanuel. <laughs> uh, At least they're back out there. Yeah. <laughs> Rocco, the big sky conference should be fleshed up on the screen right here. We've seen about five, six games played here. I don't even, there's been, I guess there was one D one win by Montana state, but I don't even know yeah. that there's anything worth discussing at this conference at this point. Is there? Well, I, th I think Montana state is the story. They went okay. to UNL, went to UNLV. One You're by right. 13. That was the I Vegas that, game. Yeah, I think they really surprised a lot of people uh, there. And then today they played Pacific, and they were down six with a minute left and got the thing into overtime magically after some missed free throws by Pacific, but just ran out of steam there late, lost by four. But I think, uh, you know, obviously very small sample size. Those two performances, Montana State, you look at their roster closely, they've got a nice mix of uh, young talent coming in and veterans. Um, I think they, they can make a run at things here. The Bobcats look good early. Uh, but yeah, they, do, uh, they don't actually have any games scheduled for the next week. I don't know. Uh, maybe they, yeah. they, they might schedule a few, so who knows. Well, we got to right get now. them on the phone. I know, I know some coaches <laughs> looking for games. Yeah, a, a couple of things. Uh, a, a team that was not impressive was – Eastern Washington, and I know that they were playing Wazoo. It was a Pac-12 team. It, it, it was a lousy team that they were playing and weren't able to beat. And I were, were any of us expecting them to lose that game? I, I know I wasn't. So uh, that was a little bit of a head scratcher. You don't want to read too much in the just one game. I still think Eastern Washington is the team to beat. But, gee, they, they lost to Wazoo. Uh, the David, we got an interesting game here coming up when, next Wednesday night, a week from tonight, actually. Yeah, uh, yes, we do. Do you want to talk about that game, Will? Speaking of Wazoo, <laughs> in, in, interesting, <laughs> in, interesting rivalry here. Uh, Idaho, Wazoo, the two campuses are eight miles apart. I think it's actually 7.4 miles apart, but eight miles. Uh, Longstanding rivalry, and 
on top of that, as crazy as it is, as big as it is, as long as the tradition is, do you know that these two have never met in the NCAA tournament? <laughs> Eight miles, no NCAA tournament. Wow. I, I, I just don't think there's another rivalry out there that has that distinction. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, let me stick with you over the Big South Conference where, um, as we saw, we, I mean, we want to talk a little bit about this Winthrop team with very impressive win uh, last night over UNC Greensboro team that we liked a ton out of the SoCon. Yeah, it was surprising. It, it's the only game they've played. Uh, they weren't flat. And <laughs> it, it was one of those situations to where you're just amazed that teams that have you know, not had the regular practices and not had the regular exhibitions could come out there and look as good as a lot of them have. Winthrop being another one, went out there, got a big win against Greensboro and looked really good. I mean, we liked this Winthrop team. I think we all expect them to win the conference. I don't think we expected them to be better than Greensboro, but they certainly were. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Rocco, I mean, well, Hampton won at George Washington. I don't know that George Washington's a good this year, but that was really <laughs> the notable game there. In terms of upcoming games, though, Thursday, Thursday night, I believe Winthrop is scheduled to play Little Rock, although I mean, I, yeah, I think one I, of these games went off, I, I thought, but I think it might be the Win, Winthrop-Duquesne game that went off. I don't know, one of them went off, though. Yeah, it could be the Little Rock game because yeah. I know Little Rock and uh, Western Kentucky canceled, but uh, Duquesne. I think the Duquesne one out of the two is the most solid, but. Yeah. A uh, quick note about Charleston Southern. I, I believe they're without their, their star whose name escapes me at the moment. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah. Good, 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 good preparation for the show, good guys. Show. Yeah. <laughs> Rocco, why don't we head back west? Let me with pull, the big, the big... pull up last week's notes real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Rocco, the Big West Conference has had a handful of games, although UC San Diego still has not started their D1 trick and won't, trick and won't even until January 1st. They're only playing conference games this season uh, there. But um, anything that's really stood out with you for you so far here? I, 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 well, I guess I, I, I guess we got to discuss it, you being a Washington <laughs> guy. <laughs> well, there was – yeah, I mean, there was the inevitable I, gut punch yesterday, UC Riverside – uh, taking it to Washington, really great for the UC Riverside side of the story. It's a, it's an amazing one. Uh, Coach Meg Pio uh, just got the job in July. He's a former CEO of a real estate company. He's a unicorn of a college basketball coach. Decided to start getting into coaching about a decade ago. Uh, followed Kyle Smith around. Uh, you know, Wazoo's coach now. He, so he's been at Columbia. He's been at San Francisco here. Went to be an assistant at UCR last year. Now landed the job. And here we are, end of the season, and he's already knocked off a, a Pac-12 team by double digits. Um, just an amazing story for him. Uh, the program seems to play extremely hard for him. Uh, they got a bunch of scrappy guys, and they, and they hold the ball. They, they love to take the air of the ball if you can't tell by that score. Uh, they, they like to use the shot clock, very old school. They play tough uh, pack line style defense. So I think they can make a little bit of noise in the Big West. I guess we give a little congratulations. Also, he almost missed their opening game against Pacific. Uh, I think he might have actually missed it because his his, his wife had their his wife and he had their baby, first yeah. baby too. So that's congratulations right. to him. Um, Absolutely. On that, uh, that's a good reason to miss a game as opposed to all the bad reasons we've heard uh, this right. year, unfortunately. Uh, but David, upcoming in the Big West, uh, if again taking the, yeah. all these games with a all, all or, pending, yeah, all, all pending potential games that we could see. Uh, there they are. Riverside's at Denver. Uh, quick, yeah. Quick notes on these here. So um, you guys probably know by now, Santa Clara County is not able to host events, and if a team leaves the county, they can't go more than 150 miles without uh, coming. You know, doing a 14-day quarantine. So, so Stanford Cal Poly will not happen. That's uh, Stanford's going to stay in North Carolina. For, Santa Clara, my understanding, is they're yes. going to be like tight. They're playing in Santa Cruz, though. They're playing in Santa Cruz, and and what I'm hearing here is Santa Cruz might actually they might use that to host some Stanford games and anybody else that needs it. So we <laughs> might get used to seeing games there. Yeah, uh, a, a real sort of unusual stance because of COVID. A lot of universities uh, went to sort of a shortened calendar, so a lot of them are over the break. Uh, under most circumstances, you couldn't just relocate to another city, but because of the long break that might extend really until past Martin Luther King Day, uh, hopefully by then we're we're in better shape than we are now with uh, COVID. 
but we, we, you know, we might see these people taking up temporary residences in other places for yeah. reasons that Rocco just mentioned. One of the games we want to know coming up Tuesday night, UC Irvine at USC. Uh, we do like this Irvine team a lot, and uh, uh, so sh that could be an interesting game if it gets played. If it gets Absolutely. played, yeah. definitely. Uh, David, over in the Colonial Athletic Association, uh, which should be coming up on the screen here. There, there we go. We've seen. Uh, I don't. I don't know. We saw Charleston beat Limestone. That's impressive to beat a Limestone, right? Uh, not, not a whole lot going on here. Towson a little bit disappointing after I talked them up. 0-3. Hofstra, a team we really liked. I mean, not any shame in losing that game, but I think that that's one that uh, we were kind of expecting them to win. Yeah, but Rutgers kind of blew them out of the gym in that game and without Geo Baker even. So it was, Right, uh, yeah. Rutgers is, Rutgers is a really – yeah, Rutgers is a really good team. It's one of the games that isn't on the screen. But, you, you know, you'd have thought that, like, they would have put up a little bit of a better fight. I guess the story here is Elon, you know, squeaking past High Point and um, picking up a, a, a win addition to that. That's really, like, the only D1 win of the conference. I guess Wilmington being 2-1 and one against D1, this is a team that I thought would be in 10th place or 9th or – toward the bottom one of the better teams so far the, the two wins away from home with a neutral court win over troy and a road win at asheville <laughs> yeah i still think hofstra well, is both going to in asheville yeah yeah i still like hofstra more than most of the rest of the league uh i guess college of charleston is a team that um or, uh, you know earl grant does a really good job there they're not expected to do much this year but i think that you, you know based on what i saw from them they didn't look bad so maybe they won't the, the rebuilding will go quicker than expected. Uh, yeah, there's a couple – I guess there's a score missing there. Drexel played Quinnipiac today. I'm not the same who even won that game. Uh, yeah, Drexel, that game? Played, Drexel played well, dominated, yeah. Yeah, good. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, I was going to say, Drexel is a team we liked. Uh, they've got Bryant coming up here. Uh, they've got Coppin State, so they can start picking up a few wins uh, at least. Yeah, and I think that um, the big news is, you know, Northeastern had originally said they're not playing non-conference games. They reversed that yesterday, and now they're going to – they've quickly got UMass Lowell on the calendar for next Wednesday, and they've got actual UMass coming next weekend. Um, so they might actually have time to get a couple more games in, and then they go to Georgia right before Christmas. So yeah. um, we'll get to see Northeastern a few times. Um, never do games get scheduled this quickly. This is amazing. <laughs> uh, 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 the scheduling is fun. absolutely crazy. Uh, let, let's let's keep moving things here. We'll, okay, we'll, I own a Hostra. That's kind of fun. Okay, well, but we'll yeah, get, we got to keep moving. Gotta head over to Conference USA, where, where we saw a few more wins uh, uh, out of this conference that, than some of the others, uh, including even though the way down there, two and two, I, th I mean, the story really was Western Kentucky with – uh, yeah. What they did, uh, pick up a couple wins out in the event out in uh, out in South Dakota, Rocco. Agreed. Yeah, and and the two losses are to Louisville and West Virginia. I mean, no mm -hmm. no shame at all in those two losses. Um, and it was it was impressive to see Western Kentucky. I think primarily that semifinal win over Memphis. Uh, Memphis had looked really strong in their opener over St. Mary's. Western Kentucky got to play a little bit of a shorthanded Northern Iowa team. Um, so I had fully expected that Memphis would be. Heavy, heavily favored to win that. But Western Kentucky came out ready for Memphis and really exposed Memphis's weaknesses in that game um, in a, in a six-point win. And, and uh, not only that, they got to the final and made a good final out of it. That, that game with West Virginia was tight uh, as well. Yeah, they, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. So this is a really good team. Yeah, kind of a little bit uh, disappointing against Louisville. Not that they lost to Louisville, but uh, if, if you're ranking the, the, the four games that they've played, they probably played the weakest in that one. But still, I, it, despite that, it wasn't in really until, you, you know, the latter part of the second half where Louisville kind of blew that one open. So really impressed with this Western Kentucky team, way more so than anything else I've seen from anyone else. I mean, FIU's 3-0, and one of those was against the D1 team. Uh, UAB just beating up on Flagler. pastry cart teams. Uh, so FIUB Flagler twice, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, yeah, yeah. The two of their three wins are against Flagler. They also beat Central Michigan, who, as we'll get to a few minutes here, lost to Flagler. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. um, but, um, real quick, uh, as we go through this, if you want to look up on the top of the screen there, there is our our conference tournaments tab that we always have up there uh, that has been updated for this season. And if you look through there, you're going to notice some conferences have some changes. Uh, one of the conferences that does have a change in the conference tournament 
format already, and we expect there may be more changes as things go forward, is Conference USA cutting down from a 12-team tournament to only an 18-team tournament this year. So the real season worth a little bit more this season uh, in terms of the middle of the pack there at least. Well, you, you hate to see that because – is the curtain in jeopardy. Uh, they are going to be in the same building in there, Frisco, but I don't know if they're going to necessarily be using the curtain unless they want to play the women's games at the same time. Uh, it's the greatest thing in, in, in amateur sports mm-hmm. history. The, the upcoming schedule there is on the screen. That Western Kentucky Little Rock game, I, I'm very certain that that game got canceled already. Um, that, yes. that was on there for, for Friday. So, but, but they might yeah, so I, I actually okay. talked to uh, Western Kentucky just a little bit before the show tonight. They they lost both those games this week in Louisville, and they're they're looking to leave the Louisville uh, event altogether now and find other games. So I actually sent them a list of teams they should call. All right. Well, oh. Let's know if they call any of them. So, so, um, so, so Chad's got the uh, scoreboard consulting business. I've got the schedule. <laughs> there we go. I, uh, I, I just get drunk. Uh, <laughs> Chad, David gets drunk. The Horizon, Horizon League, uh, UIC is out to a 3-0 Ooh. start, start including a very narrow win over a lousy Central Michigan team, so I don't know that it means much. Most of the league hasn't even played a game yet, except Oakland, who's played about 300 games already. And lost yeah, them all. and <laughs> lost them all. Uh, <laughs> Oakland, in the event at Xavier, uh, all the, the entire round robin was completed. They also played at Michigan, took them to overtime, I think. Yeah, they took Michigan to overtime after it got blown out by everybody else they played. So <laughs> Yeah. Um, so getting better. Yeah. <laughs> getting better. Uh, teams like Wright State and Northern Kentucky really haven't played anything, anything really. Yeah. Nice. And I don't think Wright State, I, I, I think they're locked down for another week. I, they just yeah. keep getting horrible luck. And this is a, a Wright State team that we expect to be pretty good. Yeah. We see them technically scheduled on Saturday. I don't know if that game is going to oh, happen. Oh, okay. Good. Uh, I've got it's, them it's, tomorrow. I've got, I've got them playing Marshall. Uh, uh, tomorrow. Marshall tomorrow. You're right. You're right. They're, I, they're up game. there. Marshall okay, tomorrow. So. So. Maybe top 100 uh, team, possibly. Yeah. If you if you look at the conference tournament tab, by the way, the only tournament that's missing is the Horizon League. Uh, they haven't even announced the format with the expansion up to 12 members this year. Uh, we can't even extrapolate one, so I'm waiting, waiting to find out if they've decided anything. But as of about two weeks ago, they had not even decided a format for the conference tournament, uh, other than the finals will be played in Indianapolis. Yeah, yeah, Chad. Just before we move on yeah. uh, to the next league, I just quick shout out to Luke Yaklich in the. UIC Flames, they're three and zero. They they rallied from down twenty two to beat Northern Illinois uh, in the opener, and then they took care of Central Michigan, which we kind of see what they're made of today. But that's still a nice win for UIC. And then last night they just dominated Valpo, so um, really good early signs for this Illinois Chicago program under a new head coach. Absolutely, um, David. This is t- next conference is all you. Ready? I want to tell you everything about this conference, okay. and here you go. All right, we've got the Ivy League, and, and you can see how tight it is there in the conference standing. <laughs> David, good, good commentary on the Ivy League. Rocco, how about the Metro Atlantic? Yeah. Uh, we're not even going to look at next week's schedule of the Ivy League. I don't think there's going to be anything there. But uh, Metro Atlantic, I think we've had about six games played so far. Uh, St. Peter's picked up a couple, couple of wins. I like St. Peter's. And, and the, the one that's not on there was their heartbreaking loss to St. John's in the opener. They lost by one. They could have won that. Uh, Shaheen Holloway doing a great job building this program and they're um, a lot of veterans back from last year so definitely a team to uh, compete for this MAC trophy. Um, Iona had their opener with Seton Hall which was actually really interesting they opened up a nine point lead in the first half and then the wheels completely fell off in the second half but Patino made a little bit of a splash and you can only imagine how much they're going to improve under his tutelage uh, later this year. Improve over Jim Cluse? Sir, okay, not 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 close level. Just yeah. level. <laughs> they are hosting Mary Mack, the defending Northeast Conference champions, coming up here to, uh, tomorrow night, at least allegedly, and and they're not Hofstra <laughs> there. So, uh, yeah. uh, I think another um, another one to call out real quick on that chat is Greg Paulus, the former Syracuse quarterback, brings his basketball team to the same venue where he played quarterback uh, at the Carrier Dome or whatever they're calling it. That, that is fascinating. David, the Mid-American Conference, another conference with a couple changes in format this year. First of all, as we mentioned during our preview show, no divisions left anymore. It's a 12-team straight, and only eight teams qualify for the conference tournament. They got rid of their opening round um, yeah. this year. But uh, but there's, this, there's where we are so far. Has anything really stuck out for you? 
Ohio, um, I, and I know their two wins are against centenary level teams. I mean, I mean, those two teams were awful. But how about? I, I hate to say the most impressive thing about a team is the game that they lost, but this is infinitely true in this case. I was kind of big on this Ohio team coming in. I, I picked them to win the league, I think, or if not, I should have. And for them to go in there and nearly beat Illinois. Uh, they had a chance to win that game. I, I, I just really think Ohio really has something this year. Bowling Green, th they're a good story. It would be fun to see them win the league too, but I, I just like Ohio. Uh, one score that's not up there, uh, Central Michigan has an extra loss, as we mentioned earlier, to Flagler College uh, yeah. uh, or Flagler University, whatever it is. It was it was kind of a blowout loss too tonight. It was ugly, but uh, uh, Rocco yeah. – um, I'll go ahead with Rocco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, here's the upcoming schedule. Anything else that, that, that you're looking at here in the Mid-American Conference? And uh, I think we got the upcoming schedule. There it is on the screen right now. Yeah, so I, I, I hope this Akron-Marshall game happens this weekend. If it doesn't, uh, the main reason I'm saying that is Akron was my pick to win the auto bid eventually. I think they just run the best system with John Groshi. Uh, but – if it uh, if we have to wait another week for the zip, so be it. Zip, so be it. Uh, just another team to keep an eye on. Also, Northern Illinois, man, they lost by twenty to SIU Edwardsville tonight on their home court. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but overall, like uh, I, I like what David said about Ohio. I mean, Jason Preston, what a what a story he is. Uh, guy who um, I think was living in his car at one point in high school. Now he's probably the best player in the league. It's. Uh, Really neat story, and I really would love to see them uh, pull through throughout the year. Uh, Rock, let me stick with you. Uh, over in the MIAC, where there's actually a team here that, that, that I've been fairly impressed with, believe it or not, but, yeah. but, but, but Norfolk State, yes. a, a nice road win at James Madison, a nice neutral court win over Radford. Very nice. Yeah, I was, I was pretty impressed with, with the Spartans last week, and – Unfortunately, they fell just a little short tonight against Old Dominion, but they battled that game as well. There was actually quite a bit – I don't know if you guys saw, there was quite a bit of trash talk between the two coaches going into tonight's game. Yeah. Uh, so Nor Norfolk State's going to bring some um, attitude, and, and it, they're a fun team to watch. Yeah, would you call – I don't think they play every year, or do they? I, I know they play sometimes, Norfolk State, Old Dominion. I don't, I don't know if you'd call No, never. Them. Yeah, and that's why that's why there was so much uh, banter because they finally got them to agree to play today. Yeah, so they hadn't played before. I I, I guess they haven't. But like uh, you know, you think Old Dominion VCU is who most people would identify as their big rival, but not not getting along with the neighbors apparently. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was something like 1968 was the last time they played. Wow. wow. It's a it's a deep yeah. Yeah. Deep um, thing. Yeah, as you mentioned, that game, I think, just went final. Old Dominion did beat Norfolk State. Um, the next Norfolk State's next game after that, I guess they're playing Hampton here, an old MIAC rival, no longer in the MIAC, uh, coming up next week. Um, you see two teams there, Bethune-Cookman and Maryland East Shore. They are not playing at all this year. So, actually, everybody in the MIAC has played uh, at least one game so far. So, good on them on getting, uh, getting their COVID cleared out. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, all the teams that are not oh. sitting out this year played. Yeah, yeah, it, we, we, uh, a little bit of uh, sad news uh, from Howard. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, NBA star. Tell me his name. Maker, maker, maker. Yeah, maker, mm -hmm. maker. Uh, out right now. They expect him to return, I think, but still has not played for them. Yeah, he didn't play. He played okay his first game, and then but they said he was the injury was nagging him, and now he's out. And so, so far, the Howard experiment is not really paying off. Right. But uh, we'll see once he gets healthy. Uh, maybe things turn around there. Um, David, let me stick with you. The Missouri Valley Conference is coming up next, uh, where a couple teams off to, off to – well, I guess one team off to a good start here is this Drake team uh, with a couple of nice wins already. Uh, I know people are high on this Loyola Chicago team as well, but they haven't quite performed on the court at all yet. <laughs> yeah, uh, Loyola Chicago yet to play. Drake, you know, with two really nice wins or decent wins anyway. Uh, I, I don't know if Drake's going to have the staying power I, to be up there all year long, although right now it's kind of hard to, to, to crush them or anything, but it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, the other thing is just Northern Iowa. Now, I know that they were shorthanded, and when you look at their three losses, none of the none none of them individually 
are all that bad. But I think when you add all three of them together, if you're trying to get an at-large bid or get inside the bubble, you need to be able to win games like that. You don't need to win them all, but you can't lose them all. So I guess – and this is a team – I love Ben Jacobson. I, I think that, like – I, I was big on them last year. I, I like them this year, but how steep is the mountain that they have to climb to get inside the bubble? Like R- Rocco's the selection committee guessing expert. Is there enough opportunity left to get them there short of winning out? Yeah, and that's, that is a, uh, a great question, especially given the circumstance that Loyola Chicago did have to shut down. You know, they had a nice event set up with Cincinnati and Duquesne at the first week. Didn't happen. Um, but in, in some weird ways, by having a shutdown for this opening week or, or two weeks, they have to scramble to find games. And that actually could become advantageous. Like, let's just say a Big Ten team or two who are local to Chicago, they get, they get openings in their schedule and they can just all of a sudden get a game together with Loyola Chicago. Great opportunity for both teams. I mean, if Loyola Chicago stays close to the bubble, and you get a team like, uh, I don't know, like an Indiana or, uh, or uh, I don't know, another bubble team from the Big Ten. Uh, makes sense for both teams to get on the court and make that game happen, even well, if well, it's in January. Yeah, well, Rocco, they, they're probably going to need some games, I mean, need games, but, but they may have to get games right canceled there because you, you can see um, on the schedule there on the left-hand side, they actually have a handful of non-conference games scheduled, and some decent ones too, at Richmond and at Wisconsin and at Marshall. So, uh, they do have the, they do have a few chances if these games actually get played and they can win these games, but uh, oh, they got to uh, win Chad, these games. Chad, you're looking at Northern Iowa. Yeah. Oh, I thought we were discussing Northern Iowa. Oh no, I was talking about Loyola Chicago. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we were discussing Northern. Iowa. Well, I was. Discuss- I okay. might have missed the. I might have missed yeah, the question. No, we were discussing. To be fair every- to Chad, we, we were discussing them when he pulled them up. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so, so if you if you want to rewind ten seconds, everything I said was yeah. about Loyola Chicago. Uh, yeah. Northern Iowa, real quick, started 0-3, had the rough injury, uh, and they've got to win. A, they've probably, probably got to get that Wisconsin win at minimum and maybe even the Richmond win to even yeah. come back into the conversation. Yeah, you can see Loyola Chicago's only scheduled non-conference game is Chicago State at the moment. That's not going to help them. No, okay. that no, <laughs> not help. They need, a, they need a set up like three or four games that are big. Yeah, uh, just also a shout out to Bradley. had had a pretty nice week. Uh, just lost to Xavier by one point and and what beat both Toledo and Oakland. So uh, that that as well as Judson College. I don't think that that helps yeah. much. But uh, uh, there's some of the other upcoming games of this conference, including a South Dakota State Bradley game allegedly coming up this week. Uh, that should be others. fun. I, I'm looking forward to that one if it happens. If it happens. Me too. Um, Rocco, the Northeast Conference, a quick note of the Northeast Conference, another conference with a major change to its conference tournament format. Only four teams will be in this conference tournament. Mary Mack will not be one of them. They're ineligible. So uh, this regular season, the Northeast Conference, which is a conference we love, is going to be more than it's ever meant before because you've got to make that top four. Uh, on the court, not, so, not much to do so far, though, I don't yeah. think. Right. Well, I was impressed, you know, if it's a mini victory, we'll call it that. But I was impressed that Bryant uh, went to New Hampshire and won today by eight. Uh, I also was impressed that Bryant took Syracuse to the wire, uh, lost by one uh, in a game that made Jim Beheim very upset. Um, so watch out for the Bulldogs. I also think um, the Red Flash, even though they've stumbled since, that that opening 10-point win at Pitt was um, a, a big win for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A, a, quick, a quick note on that Syracuse Bryant game. Uh, Jim Beheim, after ranting that that the game should have even been played because his team was just coming back from a from from being out of practice because of COVID. Uh, Bryant then Bryant's head coach then came out on Twitter and said uh, we offered them a chance to reschedule the game and they they, they declined. They insisted on playing. So uh, right, well, it's Jim just, Beheim. Yeah, Jim so, Beheim yeah. was very upset, like Rocco said. But you have to give him credit. He made up for it by being ridiculous. Uh, upcoming schedule. There's actually a fair number of games here. I don't know. Uh, I know we want to keep moving here. We're, we want to get things moving along. But uh, Bryant has games there against Drexel and St. Francis of, of Brook. I guess we're getting into some early conference play here with them playing St. Francis. Yeah. yeah. yeah oh, wow. Two, two nights in a row. Yeah. So they're going to yeah. start doing the double headers back to back nights. Awesome. All right. Um, let's jump over to the Ohio Valley Conference, David, where. Uh, you know, actually tonight we saw a, a very disappointing performance by Murray State where where they got, I don't know if the score is on the screen, it is not, but 
Uh, Murray State went and lost by 17 points at Middle Tennessee tonight. So they now are really, are the really surprising. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a Murray State team that I think all of us were kind of big on it, losing to a middle team. We've, you know, you know how important they are. We didn't even mention them when we talked about Conference USA. Uh, maybe we need to start paying more attention to them. Middle has certainly been good in recent years, but not last year. And we didn't think this year. So, yeah, for them to just go in there and lay an egg like that. Uh, I still like this Belmont team. I still like this Austin P team. Um, a team yeah, I mean, I but, but Belmont has a I – mean, they beat Howard and George Mason so far. So we're, we're still going yeah, yeah, to play, but, play somebody. Right. I mean, they do need to play somebody. But how about a school that has played somebody? How about Eastern Kentucky? Uh you, you, you know, may, are, are, are they as good as the top three? In like, may, Do we like them more than Murray all of a sudden? Well, well, who, who did they beat? They, they beat Upstate. They beat Charleston Southern. They beat one other team. Um, yeah, Charleston Southern, again, not a full-strength Charleston mm. Southern team. They went in the Xavier and, and lost, lost in, by three, in, yeah. in overtime. Mm -hmm. And if you just watch them play, they look so much better better than what they I mean yeah. A.W. Hamilton has done a real good job mm -hmm. and when you look at them and you look at the rest of the teams in the league uh you, you know be it Eastern Illinois or Murray you start to like Eastern Kentucky a lot when compared to what else is here I, I mean yeah so Belmont uh, was at Tennessee State tonight I don't know if we have a final score on that or if that no that game was actually was was it postponed that game is going to be played yeah. next week um uh but it will be played because that is a conference game. So Belmont's next game is, I guess, coming with Sanford on Saturday, who is very, very bad. Um, yeah. Um, uh, Simo is off to their best start in recent uh, Yeah. I mean, Rocco, I think we also, I also have to mention Tennessee Martin. I mean, we mentioned what happened with uh, head coach Anthony Stewart passing away before the start of the season. His son Parker, my understanding, has now entered the transfer portal. So I don't know that he's, I don't know that he's necessarily going to play for UT Martin at all this season. No, he yeah he won't play for them, and and I would expect uh, a top ten a program in a top ten league to pick him up. He's a great talent, um, transferred there solely to play for his father. Uh, and tonight, as we speak, UT Martin playing their season opener in double overtime with a two point lead over Evansville would just be, you know, really nice to see them get that win to kind of try to move forward uh, with their program. And you can tell the guys tonight are playing really hard to try to win this game. So. Um, keeping my uh, eye on that as we I, I should have known that I've had to have that game on on the screen over here but I haven't really been paying attention <laughs> but uh, 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 Rocco let me stick with you jump over to the Patriot League where the only thing we've seen so far is Army and Navy playing everyone Ooh, else is wow. conference only but Army has had a pretty impressive performance in, in, in a loss today against Florida I mean, it's been a treat watching both these teams. Um, I, Army today was awesome. I, were they up by eight at halftime? And, I mean, it was a game all the way till the end. Uh, they, they, they're playing – I mean, I can't, I can't say that I watched a lot of Army basketball before this year, um, besides maybe conference tournament and games against the division leader. But um, they move the ball very well. They play organized defense. They seem very well coached. Um, I also got to see some of the Navy game. Uh, yesterday in that big win Georgetown, in Georgetown. Yeah. yeah, they were they were down at the start of the second half, made a run, got a bunch of stops. I know Georgetown's down this year, but that is just a monumental win for Navy. Um, so this is this is awesome. It, it makes me miss the other eight teams in the league because if, if if these two teams are doing this well, maybe that maybe the whole league's on that on them, you know. Yeah. yeah, there's no actual, no actual game scheduled for this week. I did just a quick note in this league. They they technically have a almost like a mini division type thing. Three divisions is what they set up. Um, right. I haven't actually separated them out on the screen. We might as the season goes forward. That um, they, they haven't decided yet whether the they're going to be seeding the conference tournament based on those little three little mini divisions that they set up, or if it's just going to be overall standing. So uh, we may change the standings and show those divisions at some point, but. Uh, I think it may just be for scheduling purposes, those divisions. So I'm not showing them yet. Right. I'm still hoping that they come around in reverse course like Northeastern did and, and mm -hmm. try and get some out of conference games uh, together. David, uh, the Southern Conference, uh, we've, we've already mentioned a few teams from this conference. Uh, UNC Greensboro, especially with a couple of disappointing losses, although they did beat Little Rock um, and Furman off to a 3 0 start, albeit, well, yeah, albeit only beating upstate and two non D1 teams. 
Right. Uh, Furman, I, I don't think they've gotten the chance to flex their muscles yet. I'm really big on this team and think that they'll show. But how about Mercer? Uh, you, you, uh, you, you stole my thunder. Uh, I was going to go there next. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you, you know, they, they got the win against Georgia Tech, and it was decisive. They had another nice win against Georgia State, a team we'll talk about here in a few minutes. Uh, not much expected, at least not from me, from Mercer this year. But, God, what a start. Absolutely. Well, Rocco, I'm very impressed with this Mercer team so far. I mean, yeah. Georgia Tech has shown that they've got nothing. Uh, they actually lost – Georgia Tech lost to both Georgia State and to Mercer, and then Mercer won the uh, tiebreaker game, I guess, by beating Georgia State. <laughs> yeah, not just beating them. They, I mean, they thoroughly beat them down. Like, that was, a, that was a very impressive win. Georgia State, you know, they're a top 85 uh, Palm team coming in, Ken Palm team. Um, Mercer – what was the story, What you know, in some respects last year, like nobody picked them in the top four and sure enough, they got fourth disappointing showing at the SoCon tournament. So I think this off season was probably really motivating for them, bringing a lot of guys back coach Gary's second year. Um, and we're seeing that, you know, that momentum roll over into the start of this year. It's pretty, pretty neat to see um, their game tomorrow got canceled. Uh, Elon is on a, on a shutdown now. So, um, maybe they can get together and play Western Kentucky in the next couple of days. I'm hoping to make that happen. Um, uh, that'd be a good one. They're, they're scheduled <laughs> yeah, for Coastal Georgia on Sunday. I think you can easily cancel that game. Yeah. <laughs> well, even um, so, they could play Friday. Is my yeah, yeah, my and and actually, they, but there are some interesting games if they happen on the schedule here on this conference with Greensboro at Louisville. Uh, yeah. Also, we see look, we look at um, Furman with a with a big week again oh, if yeah. they happen but Furman has a trip to Richmond and a trip to Cincinnati on the schedule here for this next week both of those really good games I, I don't know if they have it in them to beat Richmond but I do think they can go to Cincinnati and win yeah and hopefully that Richmond game can happen uh, Richmond had yeah. to cancel at at Charleston tonight so um, hopefully we can see them back on the court quickly mm -hmm. this is why we're not spending too much time with with previewing games here because we know <laughs> that, that we may be preview games that just simply will not happen or maybe have already been canceled and we're talking about the yeah event. yeah um, yeah. Uh, let's jump over, uh, Rocco, to the SWAC. Where three bit it, SWAC. Where, where, yes, we have a new thing here. We'll go for the three bit SWAC. Now, it's going to be a little bit difficult here, but, but I, I've got a theory how we could do this. We need three bids out of the SWAC. Now, first of all, the Ivy League being shut down loses us an automatic bid. So let's give, give it to the, the SWAC. SWAC. That's yeah. two. Now, what we need is Texas Southern to have an incredible season but losing the conference tournament and getting that large bid. That's our three bid swack. We have, yeah. we have a path here though. <laughs> but uh, uh, Texas Southern did win at Wyoming and it's very difficult to win in Wyoming. Nobody gets that high. Yep. I mean, uh, Wyoming has a hell of a time winning there. <laughs> I, I like where you're going with this, Chad. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Al Alabama A&M is ineligible, but they did have a, a pretty amazing win to beat Bucky McMillan and Sanford in their D1 opener. Uh, pretty stunning win, I think. Sanford expected to, to roll, and, and uh, Alabama a and looked good. Yeah, they did, though. Sanford has looked not very good so far. <laughs> so not, he lost a D1 game, game as yeah. well. So, but uh, <laughs> uh, Prairie View with a win over Evansville there. That's the other, I guess, D1 win out of this conference. Um, but if, we need, if we're going to get Texas Southern some wins, David, uh, let's see what's on their schedule this week. I haven't even looked at this, so I'm just yeah. guessing that they even have games this week. I assume they do. There we go. They're at St. Mary's. Uh, that's oh, that's a, a nice win. Assuming it happens. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of buy games here, although not quite as many as normal because of everything going on with COVID. But there are, there are definitely some buy games going on here in this conference. Mm -hmm. um, David, over in the Summit League, South Dakota State. I think we got to talk about them a little bit. They. Uh, did pick up? Did they get two? I think they got two wins out of their at that event. Am I correct? Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. Not they. Who beat them? Western Kentucky beat them. I want to say they beat Northern Iowa and was it? Yeah, they beat Utah State also. Utah State. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so they, they, um, they lost to St. Mary's. Actually. Yeah. They yeah. Lost, they lost, they lost, lost to St. Mary's, Mary's. Went to the losers bracket and then. That, is that what happened? I don't know. Yeah, I watched it. They, they lost to West Virginia and St. Mary's. So, so they, they, they went one and two there. So they went one and two. Yeah. But they beat. Uh, they won on the, But then they went on the road tonight, tonight and won at the Iowa names. State. Yeah, yeah they won the names. Let's not talk State. about this league. We messed it up too badly. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I uh, again, uh, South Dakota State. The the tournament was an opportunity for them. Although they did get the one win, they you were probably hoping to see them get at least one more notable win. Um, I still like them way better than anyone else in this league. 
I absolutely agree. I don't think anyone else in this league is really going to come close. In fact, other than Western Illinois hasn't played yet at all, everyone else has suffered a lot. Well, Denver's 1-0, but um, yeah. there's the upcoming schedule. South Dakota State, a game at Bradley Friday night. If that happens, that would be a nice one. Uh, it's also scheduled the same game on Tuesday night, so it may happen once, twice, or no times. Right. Uh, who knows at this point? <laughs> That's 2020 scheduled for you. Um, over the Sunbelt Conference, quick note about conference tournaments here. If you look up on this in the tab on the conference service Sunbelt, uh, this was not because of COVID. This was just the Sunbelt decided after last season to completely redo the way their conference tournament is. Again, they are going with a standard format 12-team tournament as opposed to that. If you remember from last year, they had this way extended – uh, I think it had hours. 11 I, rounds. Yeah, it was 11, yeah. Uh, they are seated, they're going to see the conference tournament by these new divisions this year, though. So it's so it's the old kind of the old SEC format where East one versus the winner of West four. West five. Or, yeah, 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 that's what it is. It's, yeah, but uh, but uh, David, let me start with you. Uh, we talked a little bit about Georgia State uh, and uh, them and Little Rock off to some nice starts here. Yeah, Little Rock. I. I, I they, they're off to a decent start. I think we're going to see more from them as the season goes on. I, I don't think they've played up to their ceiling yet, but, you, you know, nothing too wrong with two and one. Uh, Georgia State, I, I'm still a little shocked that they had so much trouble with Mercer. I don't know if that's Mercer being really – Mercer just looked really good in that game. Yeah. So maybe they're still kind of a front runner. Other than that, no, no one else has really jumped out. I know Texas State is two and one, but, like, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, and Rocco Georgia, Georgia Southern's two and zero non D one wins though. So I mean, you know, I, I don't know what else to look at here. Coastal Carolina one zero. We kind of like them heading into the season, but they haven't played anybody yet either. Yeah, a lot to be determined. I've, we've seen a lot of Little Rock out in Louisville. Uh, they're they're certainly a team that can hang. Um, they got a nice win over Duquesne and Duquesne's opener. Um, yeah. yeah, they, they, they did. They, they fell short against Greensboro, but. I think the good sign is when Little Rock's going up against these other uh, teams that are either picked to win their uh, smaller conferences or in the mix for a bubble at large bid, they're, they're holding their own. So I think Little Rock's um, putting up a good showing there. Uh, South Alabama completely destroyed Emmanuel, who, as we noted earlier, uh, picked up a win over Stets. <laughs> yeah, South Alabama, yeah, South Alabama, unfortunately, with some rough roster news, had two players opt out, another starter with a torn ACL. So it could be a tough sledding ahead. Uh, there's the upcoming schedule. We mentioned those already that those Little Rock Western Kentucky games are not going to happen. Uh, Georgia State at Charlotte, that, that's a somewhat interesting game there, I guess, um, if it happens. Uh, Rocco, let me stick with you here for our final conference, the Western Athletic Conference, uh, which uh, we already mentioned Tarleton State earlier, but uh, uh, and and how about New Mexico State playing their games, uh, playing road games at Arizona Christian, among other things. <laughs> oh, that was incredible. <laughs> that was the tiniest gym I've ever seen. Go ahead, Rocco. Yeah. Yeah, of course, New Mexico State training in Phoenix, so they're looking for any local school they can get a game with, and, and that's where they landed. Um, but really rough news uh, overnight for New Mexico State. One of their best players, Jabari Rice, is going to be out eight weeks. Um, he just got injured in practice. So, Oh, my uh, God. I yeah, did not know that. He might be the preseason whack player of the year, according to some. Um, but the, he'll be back by the time – scheduled to be back by the time we get into league play later this year so um not not all is lost there they uh the tarleton state story amazing tonight i know you guys were watching it closely tarleton led by as many as 10 and uh just fell out of ran out of steam late but that's a pretty good sign i think for tarleton yeah uh, dixie state playing right now as we record this their first first game ever in d1 uh trying to get a score update on yeah. that I've got them down by one, but I might they're, be they're down one. To, yeah, they're down one with about ten minutes left of the game to North Dakota. Um, so their their first D one game, maybe they can get that first D one win. Tarleton did not quite get it uh, tonight. Uh, quick quick new notice from the conference tournament here in the WAC. You can see there's only six eligible teams there because of the three transitional teams. But uh, California Baptist will actually be participating in the WAC tournament. The WAC has decided that once you have been two years in Division One, you can play in the conference tournament. Uh, so Dixie State and Tarleton cannot. California Baptist will play in the WAC tournament. If they win it, the uh, the regular season champion gets the automatic bid. Yeah. Um, and then just real quick here, uh, mm -hmm. Chicago State off to a rough start. Um, 
yeah, uh, ninety-seven thirty-eight to Illinois. There, they had a little little struggle with them. Uh, yeah, but uh, there's the upcoming schedule. They're at Northwestern. There, you go a little crosstown rivalry, David. Uh, uh, I, Illinois. I, one year, well, it was a year or two ago, where the halftime score was fifty-five to eight. <laughs> Remember that? It was ridiculous, or whatever it was. It was something crazy. But uh, right. I, I, how is Chicago State so bad? You'd think that just by accident they'd be able to put together a decent team. Yeah, they've, yeah, they've yeah. had a rough go of it. Not, not, not much money in that program. Huh? That's one of the problems here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought they, yeah, I thought they made a good hire with Lance Irvin. And, and then, you know, this year, right before the season, he opted out. So they're running around <laughs> with assistant coaches. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's even worse than USC Upstate, who, who has a virtual coach. They have yeah. no, no, no head coach now. So it's been – and that was like two days before the first game. So yeah. yeah. Tough uh, timing. David, do you want to give us a prediction for Tuesday night's game here with, with Billy Gillespie and Tarleton State heading heading up to play Gonzaga? Uh, I'm going to go with the Zags. <laughs> okay. okay. You know, hey, the, the Zags struggled a bit with West Virginia tonight, you know. Yeah. Yeah, they did. I mean, so maybe I mean, they'll – Yeah, the Suggs came back in the second half. But we have, we've totally lost under the radar for as we're talking the Zags. So yeah. let's uh, let's run to our top ten lists. Uh, All right. We, we do it okay. under the radar. It's been a while since we've done – Ooh, that's a lot of votes. Well, what huh. happened here is since this is our first vote of the season, the votes were all over the place. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, you tr- especially given we have we've teams that haven't even played yet that we're trying to decide if they should be at the top ten or not. So we have a lot of honorable mentions, a lot of teams that received votes, uh, but they did not make our top ten. So let's start by revealing those. Uh, New Mexico State, Army, Vermont, Bradley, Eastern Kentucky, Drake, Little Rock, Norfolk State, and the Greenville, <laughs> Illinois Panthers. Uh, let me take a yes. moment here and tell you a little about the Greenville, Illinois Panthers. They have played four games. They're a D3 school. They've played four games against D1 opponents so far this year. They scored 99 points in Samford, 97 on Kansas City, 95 on Murray State, and 108 points tonight on Illinois State. Man, Every that's some offense. Score. Now, they gave up 174, 138, <laughs> 173, and 177. Those games get blown out. I and mean, their closest game was a 40-point loss to Kansas City. But they can score. And, and they're a fun team to watch if you ever get a chance to watch them, at least. Uh, if you like offense – Go to that game. If you like defense, you're in the wrong place, though. But, yeah. uh, a little shout out to the Greenville, Illinois Panthers. Uh, but uh, Rocco coming at number 10, Bowling Green, the team that we do Ooh. like out of the MAC. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're hanging on. They've, they've had a couple of close ones. I think they went to OT against App State, but pulled it out. And another MAC team right, right above them, Ohio. David, I know you're a big fan of them. Yeah, I like them a lot. I, I actually like them a little more than that, but, uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's early. Number eight, they haven't played a game yet, but there's Loyola Chicago. They got to vote in the top 25 polls uh, nationally even. But uh, we got two teams tied for six. Let's show them both here. We've got Liberty and and Belmont. uh, Yeah. Uh, Liberty, kind of a surprise this year. I know we talked about them earlier, but uh, doing more than what we expected, I think. Belmont won the D.C. Paradise Jam. There you go. Uh, they, they beat Queens College, among others. Uh, Queens University, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, Mercer coming in at five off of, that, off of those those good wins that we discussed that they had to start the season. And there's oh, Abilene yeah. Christian, our featured conference team at this. Ooh, uh, that is way up there at number wow, four. Wow, that is way uh, up there. You probably, probably have... because I think I voted them number one overall. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Skew the votes. Hey, they've proved, they've proved the most, so. Yeah, they probably have, yeah. <laughs> uh, number three, South Dakota State, you know, despite a few losses, a very good team. Yeah, Rocco. Good. Number two, we've got Furman. Uh, again, haven't proven themselves yet, but I think that we've got some talent there. Oh yeah, they've been obliterating D two teams. And yeah. not, I don't think it's a big surprise here who number one is. It's Western Kentucky. Yeah, and the right choice. A little surprised that Western Kentucky did not get any votes in the top twenty five. Uh, well, look, and we'll see what happens this next week. The co- there was no coaches poll this week, so we still have the preseason on the preseason yeah. coaches poll. So next week we'll have two polls to look at, but. As I know, let's go ahead and pull this down here, and let me turn to both of you for any of their final thoughts on anything that we've discussed or anything else you want to bring up. Rocco, let me start with you. Yeah, I mean, just to finish a thought on the OVC, uh, UT Martin was able to win this game tonight in double overtime. Just a really great story for the Skyhawk program to be able to come out and win their first game against the Missouri Valley program in, El- uh, in Evansville. Uh, but more importantly, just so psychologically they can try to move forward and focus on basketball after such a tragedy. Um, the other th- final thought I had was just something I've been thinking about the last couple nights is with so many day basketball games and with uh, the COVID protocols and all the different 
arrangements you have to make for travel to pull these games off. Um, I've noticed that these games are ending pretty early out, out here in the West and um, everything was wrapped up the last two nights by 9 p.m. my time. I'm, I'm used to being up all night watching basketball and I've been, I've been sleeping like a baby. It's been great. I can live with this all season. Let's keep it going. Well, I think it's going to change a little bit tonight, especially with this uh, Illinois Baylor game that just barely tipped off now and it's 1030 Eastern already. And, and you're going to, and you're going to see the uh, Pac-12 starting to go into some conference play even out there, Rocco. But, uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. But I think they might start a little earlier, but we'll see. We'll see what they do. Uh, uh, David. You want to end the show for us. Yeah, to build on something Rocco said earlier about just the craziness and the haphazardness of how these games are getting scheduled, when it comes to under-the-radar teams, I I don't know if you were, but I was certainly concerned about whether or not they get the chances because with the schedule being cut down to 27 or 25, depending, uh, would they be able to get games on the schedule? It was hard enough as it was, but would it be even harder – in the weird irony, something that I just didn't think about was that because it's so haphazard, because games get scheduled left and right, uh, there are, you know, whenever a game gets canceled, there is an opening uh, and a potential, right. you, you know, for them to play a good especially, game. So, especially with no classes for them to worry about scheduling around. Yeah. So when like you that. look at our, our top teams, like Western Kentucky, a lot of the teams that we just put into the poll, they're getting the games they need to impress the committee. So that has been – kind of fun to watch i don't get me wrong i really miss the fans i really wish this was over but i it, it's been another like like pleasant surprise to the season is that the good under the radar teams are getting the chances that they normally get and maybe even getting more chances I, I, i'll tell you and, and it, it you know we're seeing some of these some of the good under radar teams even playing each other like we've seen with little yeah. rock versus some of these teams here and and, and the other thing is i, I i've Maybe it's, you know, just some type of sick streak in me, but I'm kind of having a little bit of fun watching games <laughs> pop up out of nowhere, especially when they pop up and then they get canceled because the team can't actually get there or they show up an hour <laughs> late for the game or whatever. <laughs> but the, there is some weird sense of, I mean, it's, you know, no, I want normalcy back, absolutely. But but it's, yeah. it's, it's been a little bit fun, you know, watching this. I'm obviously, you know, not fun to see a team have to shut down because of COVID or anything like that. But Right. Uh, I guess on that note, though, I do want to thank everybody for joining us here. Um, David Griggs down there, Rocco Miller, you can check him out at bracketeer.org as well, over to the side of me here. But I'm um, Chad Sherwood. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back again next week with a Hoops HD report on Monday night and another Under the Radar on Wednesday night. Have a good night, everyone.